Hi everyone, again um, welcome to this uh, lecture of um, the, the LPS course uh, which is the programming uh, class. Um, uh, we will be looking at uh, the tickle programming, we will continue with uh, the tickle programming. Um, today I will go through some of the uh, some more advanced topics on the um, tickle. Uh, before that I just wanted to uh, mention uh, a quick recap of what we covered uh, in the last class, uh, the last lecture. Um, uh, we continued our uh, string substitution, uh, I mean the strings and lists and the various uh, data structures. Um, we started looking at the procedures and as you know the procedures uh, have like um, Three main um, uh, sections. Um, actually, if you are counting the number of arguments, there are five, and then um, the first it starts with the keyword proc, then followed by the name of the procedure, then some set of params, then it goes into a, a body essentially. Actually, the four the four main parts essentially, and then um, when you and most of the the tickle scripts are written with these procedures. Um, so it is basically starts with um, starts with proc, and then your procedure name followed by params, and then followed by the body. As you know, like I mean, uh, you need a blank space here. This you have, you can put a parenthesis, and this is again parenthesis. Uh, I mean, sorry, the the braces, the double braces, essentially. So, um, and then the return value typically is uh, you can specify it as return at the end of the procedure, or if you don't have anything return, the last evaluated uh, function. That output will become the output of the prop. Um, <clears throat> and then we also looked at um, um, how do we specify the uh, the params or the arguments. What if we want to do it with um, um, we have like many number of uh, params, a variable list, a variable length parameters. Then we can use the keyword ARGS, which kind of uh, it stores in a list of all the values. So every time you call the pro the proc, the number of uh, arguments can be different, and it will take away take it uh, as is. Uh, we also looked at some of the um, the scope related issues, uh, which is by when you use the variables. How do we determine the scope which is inside the proc? And if we are setting it outside, like a set uh, x10, then now if you want the x to be used inside the proc, what will it be? So to get this x into the proc, we use this command called glob, um, which is essentially the, the glo I mean, actually the glob AL global. Uh, the global command actually gets this value and then global x basically uh, confirms that actually the x that is de defined here can that value can be used inside the procedure as well. Um, again point note is the global x command itself is not setting any value to the value a, to the variable x that needs to be set outside it is only make sure that whatever is set outside can be read inside. And then uh, we have like a couple of other things basically if you want to communicate a particular value of the um, um, variable that means that say like you want to edit this one basically without uh, specifying this and then say like inside the proc you are saying like set x10 and then this x wants to be visible outside the proc the way to communicate is through in using the upward. And then, um, so uh, 
you can specify saying that uh, my up bar x is actually um, or dollar x is um, whichever value in the, the the previous one say here it is actually y then you can say it is y. So this 10 whatever the changes that brought back to the y after executing the procedure. Um, same thing like I mean we also have like up uh, level. Uh, Yeah, so the up level we saw that basically it is for to communicate a script back to the top level. That that's where we use uh, up level. So um, we saw that, um, and then we also saw uh, some of the uh, the main rules of uh, tickle. I mentioned like six rules. Uh, Six rules of tickle. Um, I hope you remember all those things essentially. I'm not going to uh, repeat, but uh, just in case, like I mean, so the main two things are the variable substitution. This is through dollar, and then the command substitution. This is using the square brackets. So these are two main rules, and then other than that, the rule about the interpreter versus um, the parser is important. Um, interpreter takes in a command and then basically splits it into uh, words based on blank space, as you know, like the blank space is the delimiter for uh, words inside the command, and then this is sent to the parser. The parser parses this command and it it knows like how many um, variables need to be there for the given um, command, and then it processes accordingly. And this can be like um, recursively called, meaning like the command again, once again, it sends the thing. If it uh, has a um, um, uh, another command substitution, maybe it will send it back to the um, interpreter, and then it, it can it again like goes through. So recursion is possible in the commands. Um, so the key thing is okay. So then the blank space, and then the for separating out the commands, we need to use the semicolon or a new line. Um, so these are all the these are variable various uh, rules that we saw, and then the, the remaining rules are pretty much exceptions to these rules. Meaning, like if you want to group the soft grouping and the the hard grouping. The hard grouping with um, the braces, um, the braces, and then the soft grouping is through the quotes. And the difference between this and this is any kind of special characters can be substituted inside this, whereas here it is not substituted, and then it is treated like the same. So we uh, went through all these uh, different uh, things basically in the last uh, lecture. I hope uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, right now like I mean you're much more capable of using tickle, and then probably like I mean you can use uh, tickle for programming uh, your um, uh, various assignments. And uh, a couple of other things also that we mentioned was. Um, um, how to um, actually um, use some of these uh, commands to provide the documentation um, or help commands things like that within the, the proc itself and then um, also like I mean we can uh, um, we can so there are some guidelines for making sure that the programs are correct from the get go uh, we talked about all those things. So today we will be talking about um, 
the TCP core sockets basically like how to set sockets with uh, tickle and then how do we communicate between various servers using tickle. Uh, and then finally I have one example uh, that we will kind of will go through it there are some concepts that we learned uh, in that example we will see how those concepts are uh, these rules the six rules that I mentioned now are also like explained there. So we will see like I mean how those uh, things play out and uh, how, how does it work how does tickle work in a big command. So let us look at first of all some of the networking um, items. So um, we saw in the very uh, first lectures as to how the whole networking works. Um, we know that the la there are layers of abstraction, we define the seven layers um, for defining the um, a network. Uh, in a TCP scenario, it could be just five layers. But um, essentially, and then the lowest layer is essentially the um, um, the phi, the physical layer, which is essentially it's a wire that is um, that communicates uh, between. Uh, I mean, or sends the real packets or real um, data between the two computers. And then we also saw that how the internet is using this TCP/IP uh, protocol. Um, which is shown here, um, and then we saw, in fact, even the IP addresses. Basically, like the IP addresses are uh, um, the long values. Essentially, uh, it's like a 32-bit uh, number divided into like various uh, octals, essentially. Um, so, uh, and then we also uh, knew that actually how to Code all these uh, values. Um, uh, what is a subnet versus uh, the, the main network uh, um, address? Um, and then there are also like uh, port numbers uh, in the in networking. Um, usually, we use the port number eighty for any of the the web traffic, and then. Uh, 25 is used for the mail traffic. Uh, so these are all like physical ports uh, opening in the various uh, servers, and then we can use this to actually build um, pipes through which we can communicate. And traditionally, these pipes are known as sockets. So um, these sockets are built on top of um, TCP/IP. We we actually saw some of the sockets even in earlier versions. As to how we can use Unix file system across network. So um, the sockets essentially the main function of the socket is uh, it listens on a port for any connections, and then it contacting a port on some machine for a service. So those are the two things that the sockets can do. One is if it is in the current machine, it listens for the port or any any connections that is being established. And if you are communicating to another machine where um, your machine is more like a client and then the other machine is a service, then it basically pulls that machine the once the socket is established, it pulls that machine for service. So these are the two main things uh, that uh, you may want to look into. And then the tickle already has a built-in simplified uh, socket library. So let's look at uh, how tickle works in this scenario. So tickle has a built-in uh, procedure called the socket and which creates this network connection. Uh, here there is a quick example set f socket and then the address and then the port number. So now uh, tell me like I mean how many um, arguments the socket command have actually there are only two here which is uh, one is the the IP address and then the other one is port number actually there is also an um, there is a additional argument that you can specify which is accept essentially and then when we specify the accept actually we turn 
a particular machine into a server and so essentially like I mean this means that actually it is a server socket um, so your machine is now going to act like a server and it will it will service the request from other clients. So let us continue with this one so the other one is like the F configure F configure whatever this uh, socket that we got and then basically like we put some buffering on it uh, and then the buffering is per line so every line um, the first line when, when you get it like I mean the first line is also stored as a buffer and then the subsequent lines basically the previous line is stored in the buffer uh, line and then um, basically we just um, um, use get and then basically we just uh, read the, the, the socket and then write outside into this uh, after this get. So now if you if you run this code essentially like I mean this loads the HTML from Sun's home page. Now um, anyway um, the server the socket is basically like socket minus server accept and then which port number that you want to open this socket on which you can specify it as 80. Um, again we talked about this in the, in the unit lecture the entire network just looks like a large file so that is why you can actually work these kind of things. So in order to execute uh, certain processes um, we can have like two things one is we can use an exec command um, which is shown here and then we can also use uh, the ampersand. So here um, we are starting emacs by, by basically setting the favorable editor to emacs and then executing the favorite editor um, with uh, ampersand. So this actually opens up uh, a new window with a new Emacs window and it won't obstruct the main process that is already working on. And then the file name expansion itself like I mean we do not have to do it we can use uh, the glob command to do it. So here a quick example is um, ls glob start rc that gives you all the C programs essentially and then if you want to open pipes 